ladies and gentlemen, is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that Mahjong table <laughs> as we climb even higher the 1300 ladder. I see you subscribing. I see we're only 17 away from 1400 subscribers. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. As I have to make a jump cut to take a drink of water because I'm losing my voice because this deck is just making me go mute, I guess. But ladies and gentlemen, these... uh. Tempai Mahjong Dragons, um, I'm not even going to lie, these cards are actually pretty good, I'm not joking, like, no no cap or capital letter, whatever no cap means, I don't know, like, maybe that means you're going to pop a cap, I don't even know, but, uh, <laughs> so, this is the Mahjong Tempai Dragon thing, I didn't make a video about these dragons when they were first revealed on, a. Uh, YGO organization, because I just kind of looked at him, and I'm like, okay, these cards are kind of like, whatever. I'm one of those players that, like, I can read something, and unless, like, it's blatantly obvious, I can't tell you if it's, like, broken or not. And now, like, I've been messing around with stuff out of Legacy of Destruction, Infinite Forbidden. I'm like, you know what? Let's check out these Tempai Dragons. Like, let's see what's going on with these. These cards are actually kind of good. They're so good, you can OTK under Shifter. On top of that, you can OTK under Pot of Prosperity, cutting your damage in half. <laughs> it's it's actually kind of insane. So uh, this is just a build that I found on YouTube from somebody. I Nothing here is like definite, right? Like you can play a crap ton of hand traps, and we're going to talk about all that in just a second. But let's just go through it here. So you have the Tempai Dragon, Zongdora, uh, Fudora, and then the Baidora. So they all share the same effect, these three dragons, if we can put them by side here. Um, they all three share the same effect, that during the battle phase, on a quick effect, uh, you can immediately, after the effect resolves, sync or summon with them. So, like, you can activate this one to then sync or summon with this one, because this is the only tuner. This ain't a tuner, and this ain't a tuner, so you have to use this one. This is a level 4, these two are level 3s, so you're usually going to be making level 7 synchros, which is why we're playing the Sangin Rise Dragon Bident Dragon. Yeah, try saying that 10 times fast. Um, but yeah, we're going to be explaining all that and more. Um, so yeah, they all share that effect. Uh, this one here, the tuner, is that, um, again, you can synchro summon. If you control a fire dragon monster, you can special summon it from your hand, and then at the start of the damage step, if a monster battles, so even this one, you can special summon a level 4 lower fire dragon monster from your deck except itself. So even if you just open up like this, going second, because it's clearly a going second deck, you attack with it into something, you can use the effect to, like, say, summon this. This then gets you to this. Uh, since you're in battle phase, you'll get both effects, so then this gets you to this, and then you're OTKing. Like, just off of this dragon, and actually now that I think about it, even this dragon too, and possibly even this one to a lesser extent now that I'm talking out loud, just off of one of these, you can OTK. So, but we're playing three of the uh, Zongdora, three of the Bedora, three of the Fedora. Um, the effect of the white one is basically a Stratos. Uh, when it's normal or special summon, you take a Sangin spell or trap from your deck and either add it to your hand or set it. So either the Sangin Kaiman, which is a quick play spell, or the field spell, which is basically a magical midbreaker field, um, where all of your uh, fire dragons are unaffected by your opponent's activating effects during your main phase one, which kind of sucks. It doesn't extend to the battle phase. Um, but yeah. The green dragon has the effect that if it's normal or special summon, or at the start of the damage step, if a monster battles, you can target one level 4 lower fire dragon monster in your graveyard and special summon it. So if for whatever reason you have this on the board and the opponent just like can't get it off of the destruction effect and they attack into it, and you've got like this engraved, then this is just going to revive this. And then since a monster is battling, this is going to summon this. So like you have constant recursion here. It's actually kind of crazy. Um, and then for like our non-engine, we're playing three Nib with a Blaster and three Fenrir. Blaster seems pretty good in this deck in concept hasn't really come up yet in the few games that I've played with this. Um, I'll be honest, I did like 20 test hands and I did a few matches and I'm like, this seems pretty good. We got to make a video on this more for the concept than anything else, right? Then for our non-engineer, we're playing Change of Heart with two Lightning Storm Feather Duster, uh, double talents, double thrust. I'm really tempted to make this a third talents and then cut out uh, one thrust and just play the one. That's why I've got this side deck here as it is. One Terraforming, three Prosperity, because you can still OTK under it. Three Droplet. And then we've got the three of the Sangin, uh, Sangin Kaiman. So if this card was activated outside the battle phase, apply one of these effects. If it was activated during the battle phase, you can apply any of them in sequence. So you add a level four lower fire dragon from deck to hand. That's what all your Mahjong dragons are. And then you get to special summon a fire dragon from your hand. So if you use it during the battle phase, you add and then just immediately summon it. So like the typical combo line here <clears throat> is that you summon the uh, Bedora. Search for the Kaiman, uh, and then you go into battle phase, you swing with the Bedora, or you don't even have to attack, you can if you want, but if you do, you attack with it. You activate the Kaiman upon the attack declaration, 
this then adds you the Zongdora. You summon out Zongdora, and then because a monster is declaring an attack, that immediately activates Zongdora's effect to summon out the green one. You now have all three up, and if you're attacking with all three, this one's at 15, green is at 16, white is at 17. That's 4,800 damage, so you're only 3,200 away from an OTK, which is really insane. Um, and then we have the Brimming Sangin Manor. Fire Dragon Monsters you control, like I said, are unaffected by the opponent's activating effects during your main phase one. During your main phase, you can add a Tempai Dragon Monster from deck to hand and then ditch a card. You can only use this effect once per turn. And then if this card's destroyed during the battle phase, you can target a Dragon Synchro Monster you control. Its attack becomes doubled. You end up popping this um, because in your OTK line, you make Trident Dragon. So then you can pop the Sangin Manor and then ideally, like, you know, one of the dragons that's still up on your field by the time you get to this. And then its attack will double from this so it becomes six thousand, and then it's attacking three times that's how you play through the prosperity so yeah it's it's wild keep in mind too that this uh bident dragon will revive like say this so then it can just attack again um and then we're playing three imperm because it's just good uh the side deck here is just like it's other non-engine that you can play we'll talk about that in a second um, and then for the extra deck, I'm still working on it, but we're playing uh, Heavenly Spears, one Masquerina, one Little Knight, one Hyda, one Unicorn, one Promethean Princess, and Sky Crisis. I feel like you have to play, like, no matter what deck you're playing, you got to play Masquerina, Little Knight, and Sky Crisis, and, and then Promethean, depending on what your deck is. Uh, Black Rose, uh, two copies of the Sangin Rise Dragon. So this is a Dragon Tuner plus one or more non-Tuner Dragons. Uh, if this card's Synchro Summon, you can target a Fire Dragon Monster in your grave, Special Summon it. Also, you cannot Special Summon Monsters for the rest of this turn except Dragon Monsters. You don't care because you're OTK, and you're not locked into Dragons with anything else. You can only use this effect to Sangin once per turn. If three or more attacks have been declared this turn, quick effect, you can special summon this card from your grave. Then you can destroy one spell or trap on the field. You can only use this effect once per duel. Really doesn't come up often, because like after you go into this, you're probably going into like this, OTK. Uh, one Baron, one Trident Dragon, one Dispater. And then we're playing two copies of the Sangin Super Dragon Transcend Dragon. Jesus Christ. One Dragon Tuner plus one more non-tuners. Uh, if this card synchro summon, you can change all monsters on the field to attack mode. All your opponent's monsters must attack if able. Also, your opponent can activate cards or effects during the battle phase. If three or more attacks have been declared this turn, quick effect, you get special summon this card from your graveyard, then destroy one card on the field. You can only use this effect of Sangin once per duel. Um, Sangin is... It really doesn't come up in your OTK, right? Because you're going to go into this, and then you're going to do this, pop like one to two cards, and then swing for game. Um, if you're going into this, I feel like it's something more for like... If these dragons are up on the board and the opponent's like attacking into them for some reason, then you can make this, um, and then the opponent has to swing into it and they can't activate any effects. So, but other than that, it seems like it's just kind of niche. Like I don't think it's something that's absolutely necessary. But obviously, you still play it because it's super good. Now, <clears throat> as I was saying before with the side deck, like I said, you can OTK through Shifter on this because. Even if you shifter, the only thing that you're denying yourself is the special summon back of a fire dragon in your grave off of the dragon. But you don't care because this is a tuner. So you're going to have either this or this up, whichever one you don't synchro with off of this. So even if this gets banished off shifter, you're swinging for another 26. And then you can then synchro again with one of these, whichever one's still up, plus this, to make the dragon. Ideally, you have the field spell up. You pop the field spell. This doubles up to 6,000, and you're attacking twice. That alone on its own is 12,000 damage through a fucking shifter. So uh, anything that can play under a shifter is absolutely insane to me. It's like Century on 2.0 all over again. Um, and Pankratops I have in here because, honestly, Pankratops is better than Fenrir in my opinion, but yet Fenrir's seem better when you're going second, but I really just think that Panker Tops would be so good in this deck. Now, why do we have these other hand traps here? I want you to look at, and pause the video if you need to, I want you to look at like all of our engine cards. Literally, our only engine is three each of the dragons, so that's nine, and then six spells here, three of each. So we're up to like what, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14? And then everything else is just non-engine. Like, Blaster, sure, you can make the argument that's engine, but then, like, you've got Nibs, you've got Fenrir, you've got these normal spells, you've got droplets that could be hand traps. You have all of this non engine space for, like, either hand traps, so you're just playing it like a Sky Striker deck where just all your non engine hand traps, and then you want to go second, like Sky Striker, or you can throw in, you know, board breakers like you're a rank 8 Axis deck and, like, play two to three copies of Thrust. I personally am leaning more towards the idea of like maxing out on talents, playing one thrust since you are a going second decks so that you can either thrust into talents to either take something, draw two, um, or if you really need to rip a card out of their hand, talents is just insane. Um, or, you know, go for like terraforming 
and then be able to get to the field spell and then you've got your whole engine going. Something else that you could also do too is possibly play like set rotation with magical midbreaker field. Uh, at least as an idea, that seems really damn good. Um, being able to go like set rotation, give the opponent midbreaker field, give yourself your own field spell, um, or I guess the midbreaker field if you don't need the field spell for whatever reason. Um, like there, there's a lot of concepts there, and prosperity is just a no-brainer because you can play through the half damage. Like it's, it's absolutely bananas. Now, how does this deck do through hand traps? I mean, it's kind of like Centurion in that regard, right? Like if you're summoning out the Bidora and you don't have any other lines, and they ash it, and you don't have the field spell set up, then yeah, you're kind of hurting, but that's where I feel like hand traps can come in handy with that, where if you're a going second deck, you know, who knows what the opponent's going to have on their board. So if you're hand trapping them and denying them building a board, then it makes it that easier to OTK. That's where I feel like board breakers aren't necessarily the way to go with this. Um, you know, especially with something like Fire King that just has so much gas. I mean... Lightning storming a Fire King player, I guess, isn't the worst thing in the world, but yet they're probably just going to go Mask Arena to make something that can't be destroyed by card effect anyway. So, like, if they make, like, an Apollosa, then you're kind of hurting, and if they make Little Knight, then that's an interruption you still got to play through. And, like, you have to rely on the fact that you're opening up, you know, either Imperm or something. Um, like, Droplets isn't the worst thing in the world, but it's like, I'm looking at some of these hands... And I'm just like, these could be hand traps. Like, look at this, three, four, five. This isn't a terrible hand. You draw for turn into the field spell, so, like, you're already winning. You've got Feather Duster for the back row, but then, like, this Droplets could be, like, a shifter. It could be something. So, like, I, I, I don't know. Like, I don't even like Droplets in this hand, to be honest. Because, like, yeah, if you don't need the Feather Duster and the Terraforming, you can negate two cards. But I don't know. I'm just not a fan. It needs a lot of testing. There needs to be a level 11 Synchro in here for... You know, in case you end up with, like, Fenrir and then level 14, or maybe, like, a Psychic End Punisher. Since you're going second deck in case the opponent burns you, then you can just cheese them with Psychic End Punisher. So, the uh, the concepts here, and that's, like, what I wanted to cover mainly. It, like, these, these cards are fucking bananas. They're gadgets. Like, they're literally just 2024 versions of gadgets. They all get each other, whether it's through the spell, whether it's through searching, whether it's battle phase shenanigans. This deck is battle phase shenanigans the deck. And I love it, and it seems like it's really damn good good any deck that can play 12 to 15 hand traps i think should at least require some testing unless it's the gold star light deck because that deck's just garbage <laughs> this deck doesn't have to rely on its field spell to win so guys let me know what you think down in the comments below am, am i just totally missing something like is this deck actually garbage it seems really good to me guys thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video